In this video, I'm going to go through an example of um, using the Laplace transform and inverse transforms of piecewise functions to solve an ODE with an inhomogeneity that is a step function. So uh, let's start off with that example. So y double prime plus 2y prime plus 10y is equal to, I'll call this g of t, but we'll define it here piecewise as zero if t is less than two and if t is greater than five or equal to and let's make this a little larger and it's equal to one for t less than or t greater than two greater than or equal to two but less than five so what does that look like? We have a function that is, so this is g of t. And so g of t is zero up until two. Could do this in a different color. So it's zero up until two, and then it jumps up to one all the way until five. It's equal to five, sorry, it's equal to one at the point two, and it's equal to zero from here on. All right, so, and here we have one out here. So that's the function that we're um, forcing this ODE with, and let's use the initial conditions. This is uh, gonna make things a little simpler, but not in principle any different. It would just take longer and be uglier. Okay, so there's our initial condition, y of 0, 0, and y prime of 0 equals 0. So the transform equation for this is going to be uh, just s squared times y of s, the transform of y, that comes from two derivatives of y, plus, and there's no uh, initial conditions. There's 0, so those drop out, otherwise I would put them in at this point. And then we have 2s times y of s, and that s comes from the single derivative, 2y prime, plus 10y of s. And now the transform of a step function, ah, well, so we should write this down, I guess. So we can write g of t down. Let me move this down a little bit. So we can write g of t as a step function at 2, which gives me a function that looks just like what I have here, except it continues on at level 1, even beyond 5. So what do I have to do with that? I have to subtract off a heavy side from 5 on. So when I subtract off a heavy side u5 of t, from five on, I get rid of that extra one that I had out here, it brings it down, but only from five on. So that is our expression, and so the transform of u sub two of t is e to the minus two s over s, and this one is e to the minus five s over s. Okay, so we can solve for y of s fairly easily here. So what do we get? We get um, e to the minus 2s minus e to the minus 5s, all divided by s times s squared plus 2s plus 10. And so um, to make the notation a little bit simpler, I'm going to write this as e to the minus 2s minus e to the minus 5s multiplied by h of s, where h of s is 1 over s s squared plus 2s plus 10. And the reason I'm doing that is that just makes the notation for the solution easier, and now I can write it down right away, but leaving the um, function, the inverse function, the inverse transform of capital H of S for later. So what I mean by that is um, I can 
So here we have an e to the minus 2s multiplied by h of s, and that is the transform of a shifted uh, heaviside function. So, um, so what that means is that y of t, my solution, is going to consist of two pieces, one for this shifted um, uh, transform of a shifted function and another one for this transform of the shifted function. And what is that shifted function? It's u sub 2 of t times little h evaluated at t minus 2, where little h is the inverse transform of big H. And then I subtract u sub 5 of t times h of t minus 5. And so you see what I've done is I've just written down the solution in terms of little h before I know what little h is. And I just have capital H as a placeholder here. And then I'll calculate what that H is next. OK, so just in case that wasn't clear, this piece here is the inverse transform. This is L inverse of e to the minus 2s h of s. And this piece here is the inverse transform of e to the minus 5s h of s. Fortunately, it's the same h of s, so we only have to do the inverse transform of h of s once. Okay, so let's do that inverse. So first we're going to use partial fraction decomposition on the product, but you'll notice, um, so s squared plus 2s plus 10, if I do a b squared minus 4ac, I get 4 minus 4 times 10, which is clearly going to be negative. So that means that we're dealing with a quadratic that can't be factored over the reals, this guy here. And so, um, so instead of factoring that and doing a full partial fraction decomposition, uh, I'm going to instead do a partial fraction decomposition of S and this quadratic. And then we're going to have to complete the square on the quadratic to get the inverse transform of that uh, part of the um, expression. Okay, so let's write down h of s. So the form of it will be a over s plus b s plus c over s squared plus 2s plus 10. And so um, I won't go through that. I'll leave that as an exercise for you to go through. But what you should end up with is a equal 1 tenth and b equal minus one-tenth, and c equal minus one-fifth. OK, so now we have that h of s can be written in this form. 1 over 10 times 1 over s plus oh, minus, minus 1 over 10 times s over s squared plus 2s plus 10 minus 1 over 5 times 1 over s squared plus 2s plus 10. OK, so, um, so the next thing to notice is that this piece is pretty straightforward to get that is going to be, uh, well, for the inverse transform, sorry, for the inverse transform, we have h of t will be 1 over 10 just from this piece here. That's the inverse transform of 1 over s with a 1 over 10 multiplying it in front. And then this piece here, I'm going to just write it as minus 10 times the inverse transform of, ah, well, we, I'll put these together. So this whole thing is still left to be calculated. So I'll write it as plus L inverse of minus 1 over 10 S over S squared plus 2S plus 10 minus 1 over 5 times 1 over S squared plus 2S plus 10. So now we have to figure out the inverse transform of that sum. So let's um, let's just write down um, that and rewrite it using completing the square. So we have 
s over s squared plus 2s plus 10 minus 1 over 5, 1 over s squared plus 2s plus 10. And because we can't factor that over the reals, what we do instead is we complete the square. So we look at this piece here and say, what do we need to make that a perfect square? And then we'll have constants left over at the end. But what we need is to take the second term here, the s term, the linear term, divide the coefficient by 2 and square it, which is 1. So what we need to have here is um, we need to have in the denominator, so this is going to be minus 1 over 10 times s over, so it'll be s squared plus 2s plus 1, which is s plus 1 all squared. And then we, well, okay, I'll write this out full. So this should be s squared plus 2s plus 1, and then minus 1, and then plus 10. And so now we can see that we'll end up with uh, a 9 on, on the outside of the square and an s plus 1 all squared. So because this is the same denominator, I'll just write this right away as s plus 1 squared plus 9 by doing the same completing the square. Okay, so we have minus 1 over 10 times s over s plus 1 all squared plus 9 minus 1 over 5 1 over s plus 1 all squared plus 9. And now you can see that we are um, missing. Here we're going to have a shift, an e to the minus t shift of a cosine transform, but we're missing the corresponding plus 1 up here. So we have to include that. So these are all equal. This is not. There's a hard line there. That equal is equal to the previous line. And so now what we have to do then is minus 1 over 10, s plus 1 minus 1, divided by s squared, oops, s plus 1 squared, plus 3 squared, and then minus 1 over 5, and this I'm going to leave alone for now because I'm going to have parts of the other one come and join it. In particular, this minus 1 is going to move over to that side. All right, so let me just copy this, and we'll move up to the next top of the next page. So, um, so here we're still working with, well, this is a part of uh, of capital H, so I won't give it any name. I'll just hope you remember that we're running on a string of equals here. Um, so let's move this. And... Okay, so now we have minus 1 over 10, s plus 1 over s plus 1 squared plus 3 squared minus, well, minus minus is plus 1 over 10 times 1 over s plus 1 squared plus 3 squared. That comes from here. And then we still have minus 1 over 5 times same. So minus 1 over 10 s plus 1 over s plus 1 squared plus 3 squared. Still the same. And this one is going to be um, both terms are the same. We have one tenth minus one fifth, so that's going to give us minus one tenth overall. One over s plus one squared plus three squared. Now this one is almost the um, transform of sine three t. The problem is that we have a one in the numerator instead of a three. So I'm just going to put a three in the numerator. But then that's not the same expression we had before. It's 3 times too large. So I multiply by 1 over 3. And now I have minus 1 over 10 s plus 1 over s plus 1 squared plus 3 squared minus 1 over 30, 3 over s plus 1 squared plus 3 squared. And now when I write down h of t, I have the 1 over 10 that I had before. And the first term here is a is 1 over 10 times the inverse transform of that expression will be cosine of 3t. And then we have a minus 1 over 30 
oops, I forgot something. There's a shift of s plus one, which means we have to insert an e to the minus t cosine three t minus one over 30 e to the minus t sine of three t. And that is the little h of t that we will insert back here into our expression for y. Here it is, right there. So I could write it out, it'll be huge, um, but I'm just gonna rewrite y of t right below it in the exact same form so it's clear. And I will not make the huge messy expression. h of t minus two minus u five of t h of t minus five. And that is how to solve. How to solve an ODE with a step function forcing right-hand side in homogeneity.